I feel like that most of the time. <laughs> I'm not about individuals, I elevated beyond that. I now hate just society, just all the time. And summer is the worst, right? I like winter. Winter's a good time for me, because obviously in winter people stay inside, don't they? And they eat stew and they cry. <laughs> it's a good season for me, winter. Just put veg in and cook it until it's just been in there hours. There you go, Swede. Fuck you. <laughs> I'll stay in there until I'm ready for you. I'm too tired to chew now. It's November. <laughs> Chewing was June. Now I just need mush to shove in this thing so I don't die. That's why with summer, what happens is people go out, don't they, and they do stuff and they have opinions on it and they talk about it and that's when I start getting pissed off, right? And what happens is when we have good summers, you have real trouble. And it didn't used to be a problem because in this country, obviously, in my lifetime, I don't remember many actual summers. I remember, like, days where you open the curtains in the morning and you go, oh, uh, oh, uh, sunshine, sunshine, <laughs> let's have a breakfast barbecue. And I thought, and I go, well, it's half seven in the morning. You go, I know, but there's clouds coming, so let's really, you know, just get out there and set fire to the shed and put a fucking sausage on it, please. Because, <laughs> oh, it's raining now, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that was summer, it was fun, that one, wasn't it? Right. Now, the last couple, you had, like, days where you open the curtains on Monday and it's sunny, and it's sunny all week. And that's dangerous. You know you're in trouble because you turn the weather on and the weather people are outside showing you the weather. If they were indoors, you wouldn't believe them, right? But they have to be outside. You switch the weather on and Carol's there going, hello, I'm looking outside in a field, you know. That's, look at the time and look at your time. It's happening now, this. It's the sunshine up there, look. It's very hot. It's not too hot. I'm not dying, but it's because it's quite far away. You know, it's temperate, it's nice. And, you know, and I know it looks like it's just on me in this field, but it's actually because it's so far away. It's on all of us, you know, at all. <laughs> experiencing sun and I know it's Monday and you've got to go to work but don't worry it'll still be sunny on Friday as well right? and that's the bit where we all go I beg your fucking pardon <laughs> still sunny on Friday is it when I go out and get shit faced you tell me I can get shit faced outside now are you and I can email people now and that will happen will it shit faced outside on Friday right I'll start emailing everyone so you email everyone you know and I don't know how it happens you must be able to put into the email bar everyone at desks and it just sweeps the city, right? And whichever city you live in, there's the place you all go, right? And I live uh, here in London, which is, you know, has to be done for a bit, doesn't it? I'm, I'm just... Yeah, four very strong opinions there. <laughs> you make up your own mind how you deal with that little debate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all good points. <laughs> I'm obviously not from here, I'm from the north, but you can't be a comedian up north. I have to move to London, and when the Queen's not looking, I steal a bit of gold, and then I'll, <laughs> and then I'll go back up north and build a house with it. I go, eee, it's him what left, he's come back with gold. <laughs> Fuck the building houses, let's make him to king. <laughs> For now. And I think most people in London don't live here, and those that do live here don't like it. Nobody who lives in London likes it, otherwise Boris Johnson wouldn't be in charge of it. That just <laughs> this wouldn't have happened if anyone cared about this city. Boris Johnson is in charge of a city, a man who is basically a human wet fart. <laughs> I mean that because he's very much like a wet fart. He's very funny at the time, but you have to check for damage immediately afterwards. <laughs> What's amazing about Boris Johnson, right, is you see, like, a clip of him a fortnight where he's trapped down a well or being bummed by a dog or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> what you forget is he's at work all the rest of the time doing shit. He's in there, right, and he'll leave. He's leaving in a year. We're going to find out what he's been up to all the rest of the time. The new mayor will come in and go, you know, he was turning the Thames into custard from the bottom upwards. <laughs> well, the bottom six foot of it now is custard. He's just written here, I wanted to see if you could run across it. Ha ha. <laughs> Unbelievable. So anyway, what happens in London is everyone goes to the river. Everyone migrates to the river uh, when it's sunny, and they all started emailing each other. This time this year, last, last summer, they all emailed you. Ian, mate, you seen the Bertie Bever? Right. I don't know the rhyming slang for weather. I haven't. <laughs> Something like that, on it? Bertie Bever, West Ham legend. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you seen the Bertie Bever? Yeah, I've seen it, mate. Sunshine, innit? Fanshine. Do it out of the bamshine. Right. <laughs> Coming down the river then Friday night, five o'clock, get shit face and go, no, no, fuck that, mate, four o'clock, four o'clock, work through lunchtime, four o'clock, yeah, nice one, that was a banana, it's two for a pound, what? <laughs> so it happened in London last summer, everyone went to the river Friday, four o'clock, right? I didn't, I had a gig, I went to my gig, right? Obviously no one turned up because they'd all gone to the river, right? <laughs> 
that doesn't stop me. I'll quite happily spit bile onto empty seats for two hours. <laughs> wandering up and down. Eh, everything's been terrible and one thing wasn't symmetrical. Eh. <laughs> come out of the gig, I get to Waterloo at about 11 o'clock at night, I just want to go home, right? And that's when I realise the carnage that has happened across London. A whole city pissed more so than any stag do I've ever seen in my entire life. And you can tell that because there were no groups of two people, right? No two people are sober enough to walk in tandem with another person. People are just drifting off, like grown men just smashing into train station walls. Because <laughs> they've seen Harry Potter and they think one. <laughs> One will open up to that magical world where doosh, there's that girl where she's not old enough in the films, but she is now, so it doesn't count. <laughs> I saw her doing that speech on feminism, I thought, wee, fucking right. <laughs> Blood all down themselves. People's limbs have stopped working, they're just dragging themselves across the floor, hoovering up chips. Ooh, <laughs> And more to the point, the trains are heaving, because nobody's left London all day, right? So there's a train there that is full in a way I've only ever seen in documentaries in the third world. You know, <laughs> when there's like one train a year, and if they don't get on it, they don't feed their family. So they're on the roof, and they're in the coupling. That's happening at Waterloo Station. Grown adults hanging onto the outside of trains, <laughs> waiting for them to leave. And the police there saying, I'm afraid you can't travel like that, mate. Because you sober people, you'd say, oh, God, yeah, tunnels on that. Kill myself, will <laughs> What am I? <laughs> Not piss people. You, you fuck off, pig. <laughs> I'm touching the train, I'm on the train. <laughs> you know if people are starting on the police, this is going to be a tetchy evening. <laughs> well, I ain't getting on that train, and I ain't getting home, right? And then I realise there's one left to be announced, right? And I think, if I don't get on that, I'm screwed, right? And I've, I've got a good chance, because I think when they announce the platform number, I'm the only one here who can still read. <laughs> so they call the train, and I get there. Not only do I get there, I get there first. I've got my choice of every seat on the entire train, which for a lot of people is a dilemma, because it's too much choice, isn't it? Not for me. I know exactly what seat I want, right? And I want the seat where it's two seats, but it's the one no one else wants, right? Because I want two seats to myself, but I'm too much of a coward to put my bag on the one next to me, because you know eventually someone will come along and go, uh, could you move your bag, please? Yes, thank you very much, yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to get this one, and I'm here now, aren't I? Yeah, look at that. I'm just going to touch you as well with that leg. So. <laughs> because I am the... Uh, that's my armrest. That's my... <laughs> that shitty half a one under the window there. 